So, hey guys, what's up? Ish Boy Twisted again. Um, today we're going to be going over a little bit of the disassembly and some of the maintenance to do with the MacStack TGR2. Um, just to clear things up, this magazine is empty. There is nothing in the breech, as you can tell. I'm just going to pull this bolt back. There you go. There is also no air in the tank. So this marker is now declared safe. Uh, I can now take the barrel plug out because safety is always the first priority. There we go. Let's have to the side. This magazine. We'll go over that in just a second. So take the air tank off. There we go. I'll take the barrel off as well. I'll just go over a quick few things. Um, I'm going to go over the accessories, the barrel that I use. Uh, there is also another barrel that I use as well. I'm going to go over that in just a sec. Um, but just to clear things up, now we have the clear's marker is safe. We can now take it apart how we please. But before we go through that, I'll tell you about the barrel first. This is just a stock barrel, the one that comes with it. As you can tell, it's got the little ridge there from where it sits just on the end of the barrel. Okay, The thread is A5, so any sort of A5 or X7 barrel thread you can use on this. So majority of the Tipman guns, they either use the 98 thread or the A5 thread. You'll find that on the X7 Phenom, you'll find it on the A5 obviously, there's like barrel converters that you can use that will all work in different kind of ways but personally I don't really like to use barrel converters I don't really find them the best because if you're using like a certain bore size barrel this is just a 690 uh, I believe anyway uh, just standard smooth bore not rifling at all but that's that uh, that is a 16 inch with the tip on the end of it as well uh, I actually run the Deadly Winds fiber barrel which is a carbon fiber barrel which takes freak inserts just the standard 5 inch freak inserts uh, now for the marker itself uh, it has been well used as you can tell got some wear and down and that uh, this is a paint job that was done by a friend of mine uh, a very long time ago as you can tell by how much it's worn down but anyway I'm going to tell you about a few things about the marker itself it's also awesome safe that's fire that's safe so on the front of it, I'm going to work from the front back. Got a 8 inch aluminum handguard, Picatinny rays on all four sides, as you can tell. Then we have backup iron sights, for both the front and the back. These are made of polymer, it's pretty strong plastic, but they're also very, very lightweight in the process of that. Just the front here, we have the charging rod. So if we undo this, it's a nice fun one, little screw bit on it, so there we go. That's the charging rod, the spring, so when you pull the hammer back, it charges it for you. Okay. So we're just going to pop that back in. It's a bit of a pain to screw in without the barrel in the way. If we can actually get it in. Sorry, hang on. There we go. Bit of a pain to do with that barrel though. There we go. I just want to check to see if that works. Okay. Now, for the grip that I use, I use a Fab Defense PTK. This is a angled foregrip that I like to use. It's kind of got that nice ergonomic feel on it, so you can grip it quite nicely. Wrap your hand over the top as well if you want. It's got that kind of nice little grip to it. You've also got a little pocket just there, so if you want to put any tools or anything in there, you can. Now going towards the back, on the MaxTac TGR2, you actually have little windows here. I've only got a one window because the person that painted this beforehand decided to paint over the other one. But I've got a window here, so when I'm looking at the marker, I'm wondering, oh, hang on, do I still have any paint left? Look inside the window, and that's actually the breach right there, so I can see if there's any paint in the breach. So if I go ahead and put this... Again, empty mag into the magwell. 
you can just see right there the little top of the um, the follower. That's it. Follower for the magazine. So how the magazines work? You wind it like that. See where how that went down then. And there we go. I broke it. That's all good news. We all like it when it breaks spring. But yeah, that's how it works. So that's a terrible example of that. Anyway, moving on. So you got a Windows for the breach there. It's also got an ambidextrous back release as well. Ambidextrous trigger safety. As you can tell. Like I said before, you got the back of iron sights there. That's the charging hammer. Which is also connected to the charging rod. And you've got ambidextrous sling mounts. So you've got one either side. They're only on the back though, mm. not on the front. Mm. Also you can buy them for the front anyway. For the magwell, it's got this nice flared effect to it. Which is very very nice. It's a looks like a nylon plastic for the bottom and the top is a nice I believe it's metal. Yeah. And then obviously that's plastic. So the upper receiver is metal, the bottom receiver is a very very hard nylon plastic. And for here for the trigger guard that is also aluminum metal and this Fork, well, this sorry pistol grip right here. Uh, if I was to take the rubber off, which I'm not going to because it's a pain in the ass to get back on, uh, this is actually compatible with any sort of AR 15 from the States. Um, if you want to take this off and stick it on an AR 15, you can, but I don't know why because it's plastic. So, if you want to take an AR 15 pistol grip off and put it onto this, you can, but I don't know why because that's an AR 15 and this is a paintball gun or marker, that's the correct terminology. And then I have a just exalt grip skin just there. Just help that from when gloves rip or something, or you forget your gloves because you stuck them in the wash the previous day or something. It's just nice in the hands instead of having that hard plastic there. It's not nice to have that. Now, for this disassembly of the marker, you do take Allen keys for the majority of the parts, but to actually take the main part of the marker away, what you want to do is you've got two little push pins, okay? So you push them through, you put them out, you want to hold onto this back plate here where the air supply goes into, because otherwise it's going to spring and you don't want to lose that spring. Now this spring here is actually the velocity spring, so you basically change this out to change the velocity. Uh, you normally get two, no sorry, you get four different velocity springs to adjust your velocity anywhere from 220 all the way up until about 300 I think obviously if you shoot at first strike you should be shooting at a higher velocity anyway uh, personally I only shoot ramble now let's take this out there we go that was good let's set the push pins off to the side there's part of your hammer Try and get this out now. Just pain in the ass to do without taking the charging hammer off. I'm gonna have to take the charging hammer off. Oh, pain in the ass. So you can sometimes get it out, but sometimes it's just hassle. So if you change the charging rod out with the spring, you don't want to lose that spring. Then you can take this straight out, like so. There you go. That's just a normal Aries bolt. It's a bit worn down. I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah. Also, as you can tell, that's around about how much grease you want on those O rings. There's only three O rings that I can see. Yeah, sorry, three O rings. Literally the ones that you can see there. But that's it. There's your charging handle. Okay, now if I take this third push pin out, that one off to the side, I'll go over the push pins in just a sec. 
this whole bottom receiver just pulls straight off and that's how you can see in the works there okay so that is literally the entire lower receiver now, as you can tell this is the insides of the marker you can see straight down the barrel I don't know if you can actually see down or not but that's how it is now you've got these little wire ball detents here so you have it set just like I have now there is a group on Facebook which you can find them on it's just MaxTac TGR2 owners and there's a whole video on there on how to set up your wire ball detent so one the ball doesn't run forward or roll back because when you drop the ball in there that is a perfect shape for the ball to drop straight into it all you need is just a little pin or something so you can pull them out push them in all that kind of stuff best way to do it take your side plates off and you can do it like that now that is literally everything that you need to take apart sort out and clean hold up the receiver and the foreguard fore hand guard and then the lower receiver as well so just to go over a quick overview again put that back on push pins you have two small sorry two large and one small the small one goes in the top the two large go in the bottom so pop the front one in first just so it holds it kind of secured on you kind of want to hold it all together like that keep your finger or thumb behind the trigger so you don't pull that trigger just in case I don't know maybe your safety is broken or something so I always keep my thumb behind the trigger so that trigger won't pull because even if it is on fire mode it won't pull because my thumbs in the way that's why I put it back together so first things first slot your charging hammer handle bit in get your bolt slide it in slot it into this little groove just there okay you want to start getting these parts here so it's just like that that sits over the end and what we do is pop that bit in pop that on the end of it there you go and that all goes nicely and smoothly back in if I can actually get it in there we go you might have pulled the receiver apart a little bit but that's how it all sits in okay Now what we do, get our back plate where the air supply comes through, okay, pop that into the small hole, push back on, hold that bit on there, last, last push pin in the bottom part of the receiver, oh. yep. last part in the bottom part of the receiver, push that all the way through, all nice and secured, top part in the top hole of the receiver. And if you have taken your charging rod out, just put that in through the top. If you look closely as well, these two little holes, it's actually got like a little bit there on the inside of the, um, what's it called? I literally just said it a minute ago. My mind's gone blank. I'll remember it in a sec. Hand guard, that bit, the little shroud, I guess you could call it. So as soon as that's back in, that's all nicely together. Now just in case magically you've forgotten to take that ball out that you put in just to check to see if your detents are working. Cock it, even if there is no air supply, point it into a safe direction. This is literally just a wall that I'm pointing at right now. Um, I have got a box that is in front of me, so just to check, fire it behind the box, I'm all clear. Okay, so put that back on safety. I now know that this marker works. It is declared as safe because there is no hammer. Sorry, no hammer. I'm all about hammers. I need to do some DIY. No magazine, no air supply. There's nothing in the breach because we've just checked, cleared, and cleaned. It's the three C's. I just caught I just thought of that. I'm quite impressed with that one. The three C's checked, cleaned, and cleared. Checked, cleared, cleaned. There we go. That's the one. So now we can put it all back together. And now you're ready for a day of play.
this does take ages to thread on, so you're gonna have to bear with me for a second. So whilst going through that, whilst I'm threading this on, give a quick shout out to Crystal Customs, a little local place near me that does sort of all my laundry, I guess you could call it. They don't actually do my laundry, but they could do. But yeah, they they done this embroidery for me. Crystal Custom Embroidery. Absolutely brilliant place. Main guy Martin, he's he's a legend. So a bit of a shout out to him. Thanks, Martin. And just save some measures in case this uh well in case this tank did have air in it. Put a barrel sock or barrel plug back into slash into into slash onto the barrel. Sometimes you have to give it a bit of a twist to get the barrel plug in. It seems to go in there if you just try and screw it. So that is the disassembly and the pretend maintenance of the MaxTac TGR2 marker, or the Scarab Arms, if you want to call it that. Um, but that is basically it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. Just in case you also want to clean everything as well, you can, you know, clean it up. Um, oh, with the actual bolt itself, just use some, one of them, maybe like Eclipse Grease or something like that. And then I would personally drop one or two drops of Eclipse Oil down the barrel. Just clean it up. Get a microfiber down it. Just swab it in and out a few times. Get it all nice and clean and polished up. So that will then be ready for a day of play. So instead of there being any sort of dirt or grease or anything in there from previous paint walls that have broken down the barrel. And it's got little bits of whatever clean to the inside of the barrel bit of oil barrel swab clean it out job done so thank you very much guys i hope you have actually enjoyed this video i certainly have uh it has been quite a while since previous upload it's about a week now uh, i have been meaning to do it but i've just been a bit preoccupied and a bit busy but that is it so thank you very much guys i hope you have enjoyed take care i'll see you in the next one